When Jane Ann called to tell me about this award, I was delighted for her. When she asked me to introduce her, immediately I thought of how proud and happy our two deceased husbands, Jean and Jim, would be at this honor coming to her. Surely their spirits are with us here today. Some years later, Jane Ann married Bob Nash, who also shares the joy of this morning with us. Jim and I first met the newly married Goltzes at one of our infamous Deep Haven Junior High parties in 1962. Jean was a returning teacher and Jane Ann was teaching in the Robbinsdale district, but knew no one. But she joined in as we played the game of the day, which was passing our balloons from chin to chin around the circle. At the time, it seemed like a good icebreaker, and it marked the beginning, I believe, in spite of the hilarity and embarrassment of our long continuing friendship. We've gone through golf and bridge, kids in elections, exercises and illness, laughter and tears, and the sharing of our lives and our working worlds. As an elementary teacher with an emphasis on speech communication, it seemed natural when Jane Ann moved into the area of special ed. Working mainly at Groveland Elementary, she helped develop programs for students with various kinds of learning needs. She earned her master's degree and continually added to her repertoire of methods and ideas. <coughs> the opportunity arose for her to bring her skills to the high school, where for 20 years she helped many students experience success in learning. One could sense from the beginning that Jane Ann had a very special gift for working with kids, and she cared about each of her students, encouraged each to be the best that he or she could be. She discerned ways in which each student might learn best, she helped develop creative methods to get the concepts across, and she stuck with each of them in support to the whole process. I really think that it was a teacher's example of unconditional love and support. It is indeed an honor to introduce Jane Ann Goltz, friend and educator extraordinaire. Wow, this is quite a privilege to be up here with all these other amazing people. Um, I was always very proud to be a part of the Minnetonka Special Education Department. And one year, one of the local realtors brought a prospective client to our office to talk to us about the Special Education Department because they had heard that Minnetonka had a very good one. So we felt very delighted in that uh, regard. I also just had, I feel as though just a representative of the wonderful special ed teachers in this department or in this school district and of the outstanding mainstream teachers with whom I had the privilege to work because I would go in when there were students that needed help in some of those classrooms. I loved my job and it was always exciting to watch students learn something new and feel good about their abilities even though it was difficult for some of them. As an example, when I was teaching Title I at Groveland, one little third grade boy was struggling with learning the multiplication tables. So I taught him the trick for nines, which some of you probably know. And he said, gee, why didn't somebody show me that sooner? I could have learned those things a long time ago. That particular idea just happened to click for him. By trial and error, I would try to find what would click for each student. Working with high school students sometimes presented different challenges. One senior boy was using drugs and had gotten behind, so I spent some extra time to help him get caught up. Some years later, he was working at a local gas station and I had stopped in to put air in my tires. He came right out and offered to do it for me and he put air in all the tires, made sure everything was the white right pressure and so forth. And when I tried to give him a couple of dollars just to say thanks, he said, oh no, Mrs. Gold, I should be paying you for all the help you gave me. Those are the exciting rewards of teaching. There are many other examples like this, and often we as teachers don't find out until years later when we see a former student as an adult and they thank us for helping them with some certain thing or for helping them graduate and be able to find success in the world. The downside of the job was writing all those IEPs, which are edu individual educational plans, and making sure we followed all the federal and state laws. And I do want to thank all of the supportive administrative staff that helped us get through all of that. So receiving this award is just the frosting on the cake of a wonderful and rewarding career. Minnetonka schools have been an important part of much of my adult life. My late husband, Gene Goltz, was hired right out of college to teach math at Deep Haven Junior High, 
which later became East, and then he became an administrator there. When our two sons, Robert and John, were both of school age at Groveland, that's when I went back to teaching. Both Rob and John graduated from Minnetonka, where they were well prepared for college, and I'm extremely proud of both of them. I'm now married to Bob Nash, whose three children and most of his eight grandchildren have attended Minnetonka schools, and one of the younger ones is a current freshman here, and last night at the football game, we were able to see her dance with the Minnetonka Skipperettes dance line, which was very exciting. While teaching in Minnetonka schools for 28 years, I was always proud to say that I was a Minnetonka teacher. It is a great school system, a wonderful community, and many of my very good friends are friends that have resulted from either my husband Jean's or my teaching job in Minnetonka District. These recognition events for alumni and faculty are very special, and I want to thank all of the people who have planned and organized them over the past six or seven years, and I'm delighted to be one of the recipients. Thank you so much.